and me and Lazy Boy had a whole conversation about this in our last interview where he basically was adamant about he will not call the police for anything yeah. whatsoever. Something instilled in you yeah. from the streets, man. You ain't yeah. Was... You know, I said, what if there was someone next door that was, you know, like a Jeffrey Dahmer that was yeah. eating kids? Yeah. He said he wouldn't do it. He would handle yeah. it himself. I probably would do the same. If you know someone's in there killing kids, oh, I ain't gonna waste the time calling the cop. I'm probably gonna run up there and try to be just a natural reaction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm kicked down that door and now I gotta deal with the cops when they come because I done murk Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, because listen, on a, on a human level, most people would say you did the right thing. Yeah. But on a legal level, you now committed murder. Yeah. And now you could potentially do life in prison. I got a, I got a homie that that um that that happened to my brother Mad Dog, man. Shout out my bro Mad Dog. He did time for shit. And I'm not gonna I don't know the extent of his case, but it was similar like that. He he uh his brother got murdered in front of him. And it was a situation where it was just a, a heat of the passion moment and he ended up ended up killing the dude that killed his brother that in front of him. It wasn't a planned thing, it was just a situation that transpired. And they sent him up the river, they didn't give a shit. He had to go do his time. Yeah, I mean, when uh, Orlando Anderson, you know, the one who was responsible for killing Tupac, yeah. when he died, it was like a triple murder shootout yeah. situation. And one of the guys who was with Orlando ended up doing life in prison because he was involved in the shootout. Yeah. And he even got charged with Orlando's murder, yeah. even though he obviously didn't do it. But didn't he come on here telling everybody that? That's Keefe D. Oh, got you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, th th this is the guy who's, I mean, he's doing like life in prison right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it gets, yeah, man, it gets dicey when you start trying to take the law into your own hands. Mm -hmm. But you personally, would you call the police for any reason? No, I mean, I mean, if I see like children or something like that, I think I, I, that'd be if you want. If you see there's 50 kids being held hostage over there, my initial reaction would run in there. If you can't get to them, you're going to try to help them. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't want to see, I got kids, you know what I'm saying? But that that's a worst case scenario, but I don't see my, it's not instilled in us. That's the last thing you want to do is call the the I don't know. It's a little... If your house got broken into, would I'm you not call calling the, the cops. No, you're not calling the cops. No, fuck no. But you know that for I would example, never do nothing to put nobody in jail. So okay, your house gets robbed. You have insurance. Yeah. But you can't actually get your insurance money unless you call the police, right? Unless you file man, a police report. I, Am don't I right? set my house up to get robbed, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> no, but I, I'm just saying. Like, these are these uh, are listen. Like, and, and I'm. I see what you're saying. I talk to a I lot of people like this. I see what you're saying. I get that, but you're not gonna. It, it's it's just the way we're instilled, man. It just it's not it's not an ignorance thing. You can say what you want. Just something the way we're instilled, especially out there. Cops don't give a shit, man. If you got your house robbed, you call the cops. They probably wouldn't show up anyways, man. You know what I mean? They don't give a shit. You, you got to go through all that bullshit. You know, you gotta. It is what it is. You know, I try to I try to stay away from that if I can, best as possible. Well, like we mentioned, uh, Woody died in 2007. Yeah. Uh, he was buried at the Holy Cross Cemetery in Antioch. In 2018, someone stole the headstone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it was a very small headstone. There was a homie, uh, Storm, shout out Storm out there uh, in the 530 area that that put the together idea, because Wood was staying up in Paradise, Chico area, built a lot of friends out there, and he decided to, um, and for some reason, his mother didn't want to do a whole service and headstone and all that. And, and, and we respected it. You know, they're, they're, we respected her wishes. It sucks. We wish we have a place to, you know, mourn and stuff like that. But the the brother decided that, you know, hey, we're going to do this. Anybody chip in? So people chipped in and got a headstone. And yeah, I, got, I don't know if it got stolen or if someone removed it or who knows. We don't know to this day, but just one day it was gone, you know.